So yeah, um, while we wait for Priyanka, um, Gideon, um, maybe you want to introduce yourself and probably maybe speak a little bit on your your journey so far in, in the open source because I know for sure. I mean, like you've been within the space for quite some time now. Um, I I could remember when. You know, because like I said, I'm a huge fan, so I follow most of the things you tweet on, on, on Twitter. And I could remember when you used to work, you used to, you are still working at Meta Switch, and then you tweeted about the Google Summer of Dogs and you know, yeah. your work there. So, so maybe you could probably share basically you know, what you do and you know, how you know, the journey has been for you to be open source. Oh, okay. Um, so I didn't know I was supposed to like give oh. this talk, but it's yeah, cool. yeah, it's actually, cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's basically just a chat, you know, just yeah, uh, yeah, it is, it is a chat. Cool, cool, cool. I wait for her. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so my name is um, Edith Diagnostic Wall, like you rightly said. I currently work as a developer advocate at Hashnode, which is a blogging platform for developers who want to like get into technical writing or sharing content with the developer community. So about my open source journey, I would say I definitely learned about like open source and like open source contributions from Samsung which was sometime in either 2018 or 2019, I can't really remember. I think it's 2018, yes. So I, he definitely used to talk a lot about open source at the time and why it was important to contribute. And I mean, just pretty much creating awareness around it. So I sent him a DM, I was like, hey, can you tell me a bit about this? So that's when he introduced me to Google Summer of Code. At the time, there was nothing like Google Season of Docs. And I was still in the university at the time. So I was like, yeah, cool, let me just try out this stuff. And I tried to apply for Google Summer of Code. And how Google Summer of Code works is you have to contribute to first before you can apply, right? So I never had any prior experience to like contribute, but I knew that in order for me to submit an application, I had to like make that contribution. So I looked at the different organizations to be the one that I was interested in. And at the time, um, and I was um, doing Android development at the time, right? I was clicking to Android development. So I saw this organization called Open Data Kits, and it was involved in like trying to create forms for environments that did not really have like a lot of people. Or they were not really, I mean, like, um, environments are trying to develop pretty much and it was like an interesting project so i decided to check it out and luckily for me they also had like new first um, projects for beginners and stuff like that so i clicked on one of those projects i think thinking about it now <laughs> i mean i probably chosen another pull request to work on but anyway so i picked up a regex um a regex issue and to be honest, regex is like actually difficult to think about it <laughs> But at the time, I was like, okay, ah, it's Regex now, I can do it. It, looked, it didn't really look so difficult to, like, truth be told. But I ended up spending, like, over, like, two weeks just working on that um, on that solution before I finally got, got merged. But when it got merged, I was just excited that, I mean, it, and, like, something I made or, like, a feature I, I changed like, would, would be used by the thousands of people who were already using that platform. So, exciting for me like i remember when i got a notification for github that your pull request has been made i was like damn are you serious <laughs> yeah so cool. i love the feeling yeah yeah so it was so so amazing for me that like i couldn't even believe it and from what i read about it it was already used by like, thousands of people across the world so i'm like okay here, so someone will come to this app now and like try to type something or use it and like literally use something i contributed to so like that excitement yeah. Yeah. Exactly, and and then you just keep checking. You know, after making that contribution, you just keep checking on your feature. You know, once, yeah. once you actually know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I so, yeah. yeah, it was like absolutely fantastic. So, but anyway, I didn't get accepted into Google Summer of Code, but I was like excited that I was able to make my first contribution and also learn how to write an application because. That was something I'd never done. And like I said, I was still in school. So yeah, after I graduated from school, then I kept on contributing to source. I 
started dabbling into more of like the technical writing and like helping with community to write like sample codes for their APIs and stuff. And I would say working on that was like the thing got me my my former job at InterSwitch, right? Because I was able to share experience of of being able to like work on a project, right? And this is someone who didn't have prior experience with, in an actual job. Like that was like my first job, but because I worked on a real life project, right, which is open source, I was still able to get that opportunity. So for me, I would say open source is, you know, you know, literally companies don't really like employing people that don't know anything yet. I mean, you can be building websites and doing awesome stuff, but once employ someone that has actually worked in like a company or like a maybe somewhere, right? So because I was able to make those contributions to Wikipedia, I was like able to share that experience and um, at the time the company was also looking for someone to work on their APIs and like improve it and stuff. So it got me that job opportunity. Yeah, so that's like another interesting thing about open source. Then um, yeah, I got into, accepted into Google Season of Docs, which is more focused on like bringing technical writers and open source organizations together. Um, to like improve it, and then you work for like, three months, and Google to like pay you for making those contributions. Yes, I think open source has definitely helped my career in diverse ways, from like giving me access to meet amazing people, to making my first contribution in a real life project, to um, op more opportunities for like job roles and tons of that stuff. So I think it's. It's like ecosystem to participate in. I think um, contributing is absolutely important. So if you've not contributed yet, I think you should definitely give it a try. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, like I totally relate to the story. I mean, I, I think, you know, the most important part was basically where you mentioned that you know, if companies basically, it's very hard for companies to hire anyone that has zero experience. And I that's like it gives you a starting point. You know, like when I was interviewing at Grafana, Grafana Labs, and I was I was I was expected to have a presentation basically. And I, I, I was thinking of what project am I going to present now? Is it the the small HTML and CSS sites that I built, you know, like two years ago, you know, something like that. You know, so I want I, I needed to present something that could actually you know, interest them and you know, keep them, you know, you know, actually be excited. So, and of course, uh, I've done some open source contributions to Thanos, and you know, I was like, yes, this is it, this is the project. So, you know, <laughs> I, took, I took some time to work on my slides, you know, I made sure that I pinpointed the values I was like you know, giving out. And, yeah. and you know, because, because it's open source and because it has, you know, users behind these projects. It was easier for me to communicate the value, the value that I'm adding. Okay. Because, yes, I built this, and then I know that it's actually helping out these users. You know? So, so yeah, I, I think that's like one of the best parts of you know, contributing to open source projects. Of okay. course, uh, yeah, some people might argue that you know, it's hard, it's tough, and all of those things, but just start small, uh, find the little things you can contribute, and yeah. you can work from there. Um, yeah, um, thanks a lot for actually sharing that. Uh, and I, I'm sorry, I'm actually digressing a little bit, but I would want to, I would want to maybe you could touch more on the Oscar event. So I don't know if you attended my talk, but basically I made a huge reference to the Oscar uh, festival. Festival. So yeah, I was at the festival then. Of course, uh, you know, I came with my friends from Imo and. You know, I, I was really, really interested in everything that was happening. And to my greatest surprise, I was wowed by you know the experiences like <laughs> the guys I saw. And I think the best anywhere prosper is anywhere prosper. <laughs> I, I owe him two bottles of beer. Like that guy is just so good. Like, you know, I, I think the best part for me at the conference was when you know he, the presentation on tiny changes for the support. Yeah, that was and amazing. Yeah, that was, I mean, like, I was just, I, I think that was basically the turning point for me. You know, <laughs> that was when I was converted into open source, you know. Yeah, that uh, was actually amazing. 
I mean, it's amazing. I, I, at some point, even up till now, once, once, I just go back and just, you know, watch it to get inspired and everything. So, so yeah, um, maybe you could just touch a little bit on Oscar, because I know you are also part of the Oscar, um, the, uh, the Open Source Community in Africa. Maybe you could talk a little bit about Oscar and you know, how people can get involved with Oscar, how people can join the Oscar community. Um, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Um, so, like, the Oscar was created pretty much to try to ex um, ex expose more um, Africans to, like, open source. Like I mentioned, I literally didn't know any single thing about it until I hooked up with Samson. connected with him on, like, I think Facebook at the time to, like, see his um, posts and all that about it. So there are still thousands of Africans, right, that still don't, don't know anything about open source contributions, open source in general. And there are so many opportunities that can get from this thing, right? So the fact that people don't know it would limit them from that opportunity. So the essence behind Oscar is to try to sensitize more people about open source, right? Let them know that, hey, this stuff exists. You could, you, you must not necessarily be a contributor. It could also be a builder. It could be like a maintainer. It could be the one who builds the open source project, right? So trying to create more people who are like comfortable with sharing their source code. I feel like Africa is a place where everybody's like, hey, you have to do this on your own. You have to be like the best. You must not share and stuff like that. So try to create that uh, like experience or that environment where people feel very comfortable with like, me being open with like your code base, documentation, like just trying to create that experience for people. And we, I mean, at the time, when we tried to work on like Oscar Fest, we thought of how do we make it more like something that maybe when you come, like you said, like you rightly said, you were inspired to go back to make an open source contribution because of first pass stuff, right? So we had come up with like really um, awesome keynote speakers, and then we opened like a CFP where we got um, people into the the program as well. So it definitely took a lot, a lot of planning. I think we started planning like months before it happened because we also had to like create awareness for people to register. I mean, because if you finish doing everything and nobody comes for the event, it's almost like, oh, okay, <laughs> nothing happened, right? Exactly. So yeah, we had, we had to create like a lot of awareness for the event and um, try to bring like a lot of companies from the US involved. Because I feel like everybody knows that Africa is like the next best thing. There are so many talented people in Africa. So every company wants to get involved with the ecosystem and see how um, they can like impact it or maybe try to do stuff to make it better, right? So we try to get all those companies involved as well and like see what we could do pretty much. And I mean, I think in, in summary, I would say it, it actually turned out turned out really great. We've definitely seen a lot more Africans apply to like Google Summer of Code, Google Seasonal Doors, Outreach. Like I think last last the number of Africans we had last year in Google Summer, sorry, Google Season of Doors and Outreach was like never seen before. The number of people that got accepted, right? Usually you get one Nigerian or maybe one um someone from Cameroon, but now we had like over like five to ten people who were like accepted. And these are like impacts from that event, the impact from sharing and like letting people know that you could have access to so many opportunities from contributing to open source or hosting or like building your own open source project in general. So I think I think it was cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I couldn't agree more, honestly. <laughs> I, was, I mean, like that event was my highlight for 2020. And I, I, I mean, I can't wait for Oscar Fest uh, part two. Well, I don't know. Yeah. I would say part <laughs> next event, uh, next uh, Oscar event. Yeah, um, yeah. So we have Kenya on the call already. Yeah, she's here. Yeah. Hello, up. everyone. So sorry I'm late. <laughs> I got my second shot of the vaccine yesterday, and so oh. I just uh, slept like the dead. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I mean, it happens. It happens. It's cool. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, thank you very much for joining in. Uh, I know it's super early for you, uh, but we are very grateful that you are able to join the call. So for everyone, thank you very much for staying with us up till now. We started like, I think we've been streaming for the past seven hours. <laughs> so and uh, quite a lot of people have stayed with us uh, till this moment. 
So um, Priyanka is the general manager of CNCF. She was my former boss uh, before CNCF still had promos at GitLab. <laughs> yeah, so I will um, hand it over to Eddie Young and Priyanka. This, this session is an AMA session where uh, Eddie Young will be moderating. So if you have any questions, please ask in chat or in the live stream if you are streaming the uh, on YouTube so that I can pass it on. Over to you, Eddie Jung. Well, um, how are you going to send me the questions? You send it to me via the... Via chat, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, awesome. All right. Okay, we could go ahead and start. Um, mm. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining this AMA session with the amazing Priyanka. Priyanka currently serves as, uh, sorry, did I pronounce your name correctly? You should definitely confirm that. Yes, you did. Thank oh, you. I did. Oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I know because people rarely pronounce my name well, so I definitely make, I try to make sure that I pronounce the name of the speaker correctly. All right, that's good to know. All right, cool. So Priyanka currently serves as the general manager for the Cloud Native Company. She has been involved in this ecosystem for over six years. So she definitely has like a lot of experience about this. She's also worked for amazing companies like Slap and Google in the past. And aside from actively participating in participating and contributing in the open source ecosystem, Priyanka also advises startups that industries, which is an accelerator for developer products. To be honest, she is amazing, and I believe that we're going to learn a lot from a lot of experience that she's going to share today. Thank you once again for agreeing to join this session, Priyanka. Thank you so much for having me. Cool. So um, to the first question, um, I've definitely seen that you've like achieved a lot in your career. I mean, even reaching the point where you're now the general manager for CNCF. That's like a very big deal. So can you talk a bit about your tech journey, how you got into tech and like the experience so far and what you're currently doing now? Sure, happy to. So tech journey, you know, so I've always worked in technology. I, uh, I was born and brought up in India and I came to uh, Stanford University in the US for undergrad. I came on a scholarship. Uh, at that time, I was not familiar at all with the more technical subjects, et cetera. I mean, in yeah. high school, I had taken sciences and uh, computer science, but when I came to college, I got involved with um, this freshman year program called Structured Liberal Education, where they taught you the history of human thought from the past, like uh, since the beginning of um, literate times. So I learned a lot about uh, Buddhism, I learned a lot about Hinduism, a lot about like Plato, Aristotle, uh, all yeah. the modern uh, philosophers. And that was a completely different world than technology. Um, right, yeah. And then, uh, you know, when I graduated though, like I was, um, I applied everywhere as all undergraduate students should. So if there's anyone listening, that's my advice, <laughs> apply everywhere. Um, and the job that was the best one that worked out for me was at Google. And uh, I accepted the role and I started working there. I was in partnerships at AdSense. But you know, from that first year, it very quickly became apparent that the type of work that I gravitated towards was always with engineers, with product managers. And uh, I helped launch some internal products and uh, actually got an offer to join the Edge team uh, with the goal to like go on down the product path. Uh, at that time, I had a lot of, um, what would you say, like startup ambitions. And so instead of that, I ended up joining a startup which um, got acquired pretty soon, but I learned a lot about how small teams, scrappy teams operate. Um, then I met my, but at this point, you, you have to know, like I was in tech, but I wasn't working on developer tools or anything like that. Then uh, I actually ended up working on a startup of my own, and there, one of oh, the products. So we did. Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, it didn't feel so amazing back then. It was really intense. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things that we uh, developed, the one that was most successful, was like uh, time tracking applications for developers. And yeah. that's when I really started working, you know, uh, with open source communities because we wanted to popularize our product and, like, you know, other people. Uh, encourage other people to contribute 
and there was an immediate click. Um, and so I that then slowly I ended up working at a company called Lightstep. I was the first business hire. And that's where I actually became an open source contributor to a project called Open Tracing. Uh, and it's at Lightstep that I learned everything about distributed systems, how microservices work, what are containers, what are the problems mm -hmm. people face in this space. Um, and Open Tracing was uh, a spec for basically how to instrument your system to get tracing data out of it. Since yeah. then, uh, Open Telemetry has risen, and uh, uh, that's the new version, and it's in CNCF as well, just like Open Tracing was. It was through Open Tracing that I got to know CNCF. We were the third project to join, and from the very beginning, the community just welcomed me. It's been an exceptionally welcoming community. And um, I just did everything I could to promote our project and got involved in lots of things, uh, built a lot of relationships and friendships. Um, then I went to work at GitLab, where I had actually known the founder since my own startup days. And I built the developer evangelism team there. That's where I had the honor of working with Abu Bakr. Um, and then that's where I actually got elected to serve on the CNCF board. And that was a really eye-opening experience because the community is wide and massive and so warm. But the board is where you see, OK, all the real work that goes into, but, uh, into like nurturing this world. Uh, and then eventually, Jim Zemlin, who leads Linux Foundation, he tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, you should come run this foundation. At first, I was like, oh, you're kidding. But um, <laughs> then we had some real conversations. And I'd already like worked so much with Dan Khan and Chris Anistek and had such deep respect for them uh, that when the opportunity presented itself, I was really honored. Uh, I accepted the job. By the way, I accepted the job pre-pandemic. Oh, and it oh. started working post pandemic, so a lot has changed. Yeah, um, I agree. a lot has definitely changed. <laughs> but here I am. That's kind of my journey. <laughs> I hope it wasn't too boring. No, it wasn't. It's was absolutely fantastic. And I love that. Like, I mean, you, it wasn't just, hey, you just woke up and you became like CMCF um, general manager. You had to follow different processes, right? For you. Absolutely you were like good enough for that position. So that's a really interesting journey to see. I think it also speaks to the fact that nothing just happens immediately. It takes, it takes in work and like um, being open to connecting with people, right? Just like how someone met you and said, hey, I think you should run this foundation. And the reason why that happened because you were like open to like connecting, like sharing the knowledge you have. So people knew that you were good enough for that opportunity. Well, you are right. It, the power of people should never be miss, miss um, uh, should never be, uh, uh, how do you say it? <laughs> Sorry, it's early morning. I'm like, what is the word? Yeah. Uh, you should all, um, uh, un the word. Is it underrated or <laughs> can we use underrated? underrated? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because, you know, even in our, actually, especially in our world of technology and infrastructure mm -hmm. and open source, it's the relationships that matter. And the yeah. beauty of our community is that the relationships are more open. Like you can approach anyone, you can have that conversation. I think yeah. in the more like traditional environments, it's not the case because there are so many barriers to get to the people who make decisions. That's not the case here. So people should really value that and reach out, make friends, help people out because they will help them in the future. Yeah, I, I totally agree to that plus plus one. There is this cool platform that plays um, um, like soundtracks. Just give a second to find it. Because what okay. you just said deserves a clap. Yeah, so let me just do that. <laughs> did you hear it? <laughs> did you hear the clap? Me, I did it. Do it again. Okay, let me try to do it again. Did you hear it? No. No, oh. sorry. <laughs> headphones on, but all yeah, I think so. There, but no worries. <laughs> wow, I wish I wish it worked. You would have been <laughs> nearly laughing about it. <laughs> all right, cool. Thank you so much for answering that question. It definitely gave a lot of insights to your journey. So, um, looking at the CNCF landscape, it's quite. I mean, some would say it's quite overwhelming. So, what would you suggest like a good path for someone to follow? If they're interested in the cloud native like community or want to be more involved in the cloud ecosystem, 
Absolutely. I think the CNCF landscape is exactly that, a landscape. So it's supposed to show you everything, right? And that's why it's so busy. But what you will see in the landscape is that there are categories, right? Like there is a um, CSED, I think, and then there's like security, there's platforms, mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. So I see the landscape as useful, one, as a first glance for people to understand like, oh, there is a lot going on here. That's great. Yeah. Second, it's useful when you know what you're looking for. So if you're looking for a, a security solution, if you're looking for some serverless insights, then it's super useful. Uh, yeah. But middle ground between knowing this is a vast ecosystem and, um, you know, uh, and knowing exactly where to look is the more where to start question. For that, I would recommend that people actually, um, <laughs> actually, my opinion is that the KubeCon Cloud Native Cons are the best way to get started. So these are flagship yeah. events. They happen. Um, three times a year, once in, well, in the real world, it used to always be US <laughs> and uh, then um, Asia Pac. And now, of course, everything is virtual, but that's a good thing because anybody can join without the hassle of travel. So yeah. Cuba Native Con uh, U is actually happening next week. And I encourage anyone and everyone to attend. Um, if you, um, if you're a student, you can reach out and get a student code. So I'm happy to help with that. Um, just so you know, like because of this need for beginner content, beginner understanding, we have a 101 track. We also have started a business value track this time, subtrack, which is just like three, four talks for people who like literally like definitions in cloud native, how to uh, yeah. sell open source to your boss, those kinds of like, you know, really fundamental things. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, Every time there's something new at KubeCons, and also you meet a ton of people, you play games, you have fun. I'm doing happy hours, people join all the time. So that's a good way to get like an intro into the community. I think events that we have restarted like KCD, KCD Africa, which is happening right now, are also a great option. Um, so I would say go to where the people are to get started. Once you have built a little bit of knowledge, uh, then you start going into uh, the landscape to pick specific technologies that you may need. Uh, I would actually say there is an edX course on Kubernetes fund fundamentals. Oh, okay. That might be a really good one to look at too. All right, awesome. Please, if you don't mind, can you share like the link here, like in the chat so that we could send, so they could wow. easily access it. Yes, All right, cool. I'm looking right now. <laughs> awesome. It's good to know that the um, CSAF is creating beginner friendly content and making it much more welcoming for people who want to join um the foundation and the ecosystem so that's that's fantastic to hear thanks for sharing absolutely so, yeah there's this popular myth that i've had a lot of people talk about they believe that um, open source contributions is only for software engineers do you believe that's true um based on your answer what what are your thoughts on this on this myth sorry sorry uh, you said people's people say that open source is only for engineers what yeah yeah like people be like if so for instance i'm a designer i'll be like no i don't i can't where would i possibly find like anything design related to doing the open source ecosystem so can you speak a bit more to the opportunities that other people can assess regardless of being software engineer absolutely i mean think about this today we are the fastest growing a community in open source. Why is that happening? Because so many for-profit companies have built products and offerings based on our open source projects. Yeah. And so the need for all types of professionals, whether it's a designer, whether it's a tech docs writer, whether it's a marketer, events producer, everything is like so needed, right? So first is that in the ecosystem that's created by cloud native technologies, there are companies and just like any company they need all kinds of skill sets and you should totally apply because it's a hot industry the second piece is the open source projects directly when you think of the open source projects i agree that there's been this myth or uh, i would say um, just assumption that <laughs> yeah, that open source is for and by developers that's absolutely how it started yes because they are contributing code. 
But the reality is now open source is much more sophisticated. It's used, it's so much more mainstream. We need documentation for those projects. Yeah. We need websites for those projects. So we need mm -hmm. design work. So there is, um, and then we need to like, CNCF is full of staff that works on, uh, you know, doing events, doing marketing, doing all of that for open source projects. So for each and every one of you, there is a place in the open source community, definitely the cloud native community. So definitely consider joining us. <laughs> Thank you. I think the last thing you said is like, should be the highlight of this event. There's like space for everyone in the CNCF. Like whatever it is you're doing, you're a technical writer, you could contribute to the website or the documentation, or you're a designer, you could contribute to the designs, make, make it more accessible or more user friendly. Whatever it is you're doing, there's like something you could actually contribute to. Absolutely. And I wanted to mention one thing, which is mentorships. Something the CNCF like pays a lot of attention to is, you know, again, uplifting as many people as we can and helping them yeah. in their career. So one of the things we do is called LFX mentorships, which is that in the summer, people, well, in the Northern Hemisphere summer, people can okay. apply to, <laughs> to do um, an, a mentorship with uh, our open source projects. And they yeah. actually type in for it and they are paired with the projects to then uh, work on different things. You would assume that it's all about just, um, again, coding, right? But no, yeah. like I heard of someone who's actually, I just saw a video yesterday of this lady who is doing user research as as her mentorship like experience. And so yeah. that's a big one to look at. I'm going to, here's the general, I'm trying to find the right link for you. Um, sure, it's a good time. Yeah, but I'm, I would like to share that because it may be useful to some people over here. Um, so, doo -doo -doo, where is it? Sorry. Um, where is the mentorships? About, well, I'm in the Linux Foundation website. No, that's not where I'm trying to go. Okay, there we go. Mentorship. Cool. Uh, 2020. Okay, spring. Oh, actually, it turns out we have terms. It's, sorry, I misspoke. Um, we have terms. So spring term is March to May. Oh, okay. That's, that's better. Like, I agree. And so here's the link. You can share it with anyone. One second. Yeah. Not lost in the windows. <laughs> Tabs. Okay. Here you go. Um, and this should help. Like, you can definitely put this out there. For anyone who wants to apply to be a mentor, anyway, please go ahead. Um, there are lots of options out there. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. We're going to share that in the general chat so they can easily assess it. All right, cool. Cool. So there is this, um, I remember there was this time I was having a conversation with like a group of people in the ecosystem. And I think it was about how do you get, um, like, get opportunities, right? And someone mentioned that contributing to open source can be one of those ways you could level up. So that when you apply for a job, they could see that you have some level of experience working with a, a real life project, right? But then some people they agree with this. They're like, no, you can't say contributing to open source can help in any way. So what are your thoughts on that? Do you think contributing to open source can level up someone's career or not? Absolutely. My whole career is built on open source. <laughs> so, exactly. Yes. Um, I would say, you know, the big reason that is the case, especially now, is not only are you building your skills when you're contributing, but also, yeah. because, as I mentioned, like, especially in the cloud native ecosystem, a lot of innovation that for-profit companies are doing is based upon open core software. And mm -hmm. so there is so many opportunities to be part of something that is um, going to be valuable to a company that you're naturally yeah your career chances i think yeah. because of that it's also become like maybe it's become a little intimidating to join projects in let's say cncf because it's like all these experts are part of it now yeah um, and because you know like companies are paying people to be 100 percent working on open source and so in that world i think it's really important to like you know do the mentorship attend the event develop your knowledge and uh, then just start uh, there is, especially for Kubernetes, which is our flagship project, we have um, 
this like you know contributor experience and like they try to onboard new contributors so you have a lot of help you should absolutely go and do it because you will be noticed by all these people who are in the community they all work places they are always hiring they'll reach out to you you can even ask them that hey i'm looking <laughs> exactly Mm-hmm. So it's the way to go for sure. It's the new version of networking. You know how networking used to be the thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's exactly. I agree because yeah, because when, when you when you think it's when you contribute to open source projects, chances are that project or that organization they are like people from different places all over the world. There, right? So by contributing, you're already making like um, yourself known to those people, right? So you're already building relationships. And those people might help you get like your next job or maybe help you review your article. There are like so many opportunities, so many things you could assess from just contributing to such open source organizations. So yeah, I'm definitely on the side that open source can help you level up your career. Absolutely. It's like a must do, especially in this industry. <laughs> I agree. I agree. So what, what would you say are like some of the skills required to scale in like cloud native ecosystem or like cloud in general? Uh, what are the skills that are required to? To scale, like if someone wanted to you know, start doing something specific, like what are the things you need to know in order to let's say apply for your first job or you also uh-huh. do things about scale and like, yeah, in the ecosystem. Okay. Okay, got it. Because when you said scale, I was like, because you know, scale had so so much of a technical meaning in like, yeah. uh, <laughs> like oh, how should they scale their production system? That's yeah, yeah, that's that is like it's very broad, so it could mean anything. Yeah, so it makes sense for you to clarify. No, no, no worries. So, okay, so what are the things people might need for their first job? Uh, I would say. Every first job is different. Uh, if we are talking yeah. about the what in general i think what's only going to help is be familiar with the definitions in cloud native and be familiar with um you know the key projects maybe look at all yeah. the graduated projects and cncf actually you can use the landscape for this thing you can filter to look at yeah. projects <laughs> let me drop the link to that here that's a good idea yeah um so be familiar with these things and then um be an, I think being an active participant in the community and looking at like the technical problems that are interesting to you is a really yeah. good head start because then you'll seek out jobs like that. And when you get into that job, you'll know more and you'll be uh, able to be successful very quickly. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's fantastic to be honest. It's actually great. All right, cool. So we have like um, some organizations like, for instance, Shikur Africa, which recently started like a place where try to bring in more women into like the cloud ecosystem, right? So do they do um, the CNCF have something like that? Something focused on like maybe women trying to promote more women to join the organization, um, to make, or maybe learn more about so trying to make it more inclusive or diverse for people. Absolutely. So actually, the mentorships I mentioned, we try our level best to, you know, it's like, um, like a diversity uh, scholar, it's like diversity is a number one criteria and how we yeah. like people. And that's gender demographic, that's all kinds of things, right? Um, mm-hmm. That's a factor. Uh, besides that, what we do in our flagship KubeCon Cloud Native Cons is we ensure that we um, how do I say it? Um, we have uh, like as many like female speakers as possible in yeah. our keynote stages. We tend to like do better <laughs> than the regular talks, uh, but yeah. we're all working on it. But I think like the number one is our like, and we also provide scholarships to KubeCon events, especially in person. That's that we, yeah, and they are diversity and need based. So those are all some things happening. In general, you know, I think. There's many places that you'll hear of programs and this and that, and we, of course we have those. But it is my personal view that it's like, you know, you have to be committed to diversity mm-hmm. and do something every day. Like it's a bit by bit, like you move the mountain. And that exactly. means that every person you talk to, every time you come across someone who may be uh, talented and interested in our space, then it's about yeah. going out way to make sure we share opportunities with them we offer ourselves as mentors we offer ourselves like hey reach out to me if you're ever looking for a job i'll try to help you and yeah. that is something we at least in the cncf staff do like every day of our lives so 
and like we keep an open door so for example my twitter dms are open anyone can reach out please feel free <clears throat> the cnc of slack anyone can join that and learn and like reach out ask questions so there is this open door policy that mm -hmm. there is this open door policy that helps us help anyone who needs something and we have a big focus on diversity and inclusion and that's through our programs and through our one-on-one -on -one efforts yeah, that's fine. It's, it's really good to know that there's something you said about being intentional about doing this it's not just uh, something you just do one initiative like boom we've, we've fixed diversity it's like doing it consistently yeah I because it's not it's not something that it's going to happen overnight, right? It's something that has to be done consistently and with patience to make it a lot more inclusive for people. But it's really good to hear that the organization is working in that direction and trying to make inclusivity and um, like making it okay and better for everybody to feel involved and feel like part of the community. Yeah, awesome. and we also like try to set the example with the staff demographics, like we are very diverse. Yeah. We are, there's so many women, there's so many different countries represented. I yeah. have uh, team members from Ukraine, from uh, Berlin, uh, so Germany, uh, US, all kinds of, there's someone in Bali. There's like, oh, all wow. kinds of, you know, you know. so there's all kinds of people. There's, um, there's also just, you know, in, in our, a lot of our efforts, like the center around mentorships, uh, scholarships to KubeCon and also the programming at KubeCon. So yeah. you'll see in KubeCon that there are specific de specific DEI initiatives like there's mentorship sessions, there is like uh, networking, career help, mm -hmm. and just like uh, like learning from each other. So there's a lot over there that happens to encourage anyone and everyone to make progress. Yeah, that's absolutely fun. It's very good to hear to hear that. To be honest, so what what would you say is like the next steps for CNCF? Right, you guys are already doing amazing things. What are like what are people looking to do in the future for the community in general and trying to make the foundation a lot more better? Yeah, I mean that is actually the main thing that I think about all the time is like how are we, you know, actually keeping pace with our very vibrant community that keeps on and yeah. on. <laughs> Um, so there's so much happening. Uh, so some of the programs that are fun, like, well, one is this KCDs. You folks are one of our flagship ones for KCD. You did a great job organizing. Um, and we have now have KCDs can be virtual. So there are ones like we have one in every continent except for Antarctica. And so <laughs> good. Um, and soon they'll be back in person. The other is there's a launch happening soon of Cloud Native TV, which mm, is our yeah, it's our Twitch TV channel. So you can just go to cloudnative.tv and you'll go to the Twitch page. And June 7th is when they're going to launch and have like oh, shows up. And it's going to be like, that's actually also going to be a really good amount of beginner content. There's a lot of like uh, 100 yeah. uh, projects 101, mm -hmm. lots of there's also a show around specifically looking at DEI contributors, whether they're women of color, and how they are, how they have been successful. So that's coming, and our hope there is to encourage and excite a broader audience. Yeah. Um, so there are lots of programs. A sister event, a sister effort that we have launched is Inclusive Naming Initiative, and that is something that I've been working on, which is um, based on the Kubernetes projects efforts to remove uh, racially problematic language from oh, software interesting. yeah so we want to remove master slave we want to remove whitelist blacklist because such things should have no place in our code bases mm -hmm. and uh, i and i actually that's what we call it has gotten a lot of attention we actually got a new york times article recently which oh, was wow. <laughs> And it's all based on the work we did at the in the Kubernetes project to do this. Yeah. And now lots of companies are participating. If anyone here has is working at a company that would like to make their code base, you know, not uh, not be racially problematic terminology, yeah. uh, they should consider looking at it. I'm gonna find the article and um, share with you. Um, sure. But yeah, so it's like lots of um, good stuff is happening. Um, and 
I also, one more thing though, we in the staff, we can think of certain number of ideas. We can think of certain number of uh, plans, but yeah. really the community is what we want to leverage. <clears throat> so if Very anyone good. has a good idea that they want to share of like, hey, this can be useful to people, definitely bring it up and we will work with you to see if it's like, you know, doable. And if it is, yeah. we'll definitely go do it. So what channels can you bring up these ideas? Is it like through the Slack channel or do you have like a dedicated place where members of the communities can like share ideas or feature requests or something? That's actually a really good idea. We don't have like, <laughs> we should. Yeah. We work on that because we right now it's like ad hoc, like send me a DM, send someone a Slack message. Um, yeah. So that is right now. But I think actually we should build out like, any suggestions for us kind of thing so mm -hmm. yeah I think it'll be a lot more easier to manage because uh, yeah, if they're sending messages to different people you might get lost in there but they have a place where everybody knows that this is where you can like drop suggestion and if you people pick up any other social you can just like see if you hey we're currently working on this or something i think it's be great that's a really good idea will do <laughs> <laughs> all right fantastic <laughs> all right thank you so so much for answering all the questions you definitely give me a lot of insights about cncf CF in general open source contributions on your journey i definitely learned a lot and i believe that people who participated in this area may also learn a lot as well so thank you so so much for joining i know it's super early over there so i mean it, <laughs> the fact that you still decided to join at this time means a lot so thank you so oh, much do have a nice day Thank you so much for having me. You are such a great interviewer. I had a really good time. And, <laughs> I, hope you you and uh, I hope I see you around more in the Cloud Native community. Sure. <laughs> All right. Take care of yourself. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.